Uh, well, before I start responding to that question, I think I need to explain why it is difficult for collaborations to be successful at all times. And I think the main reason for that is that when you bring different groups of people together, what immediately arises is the issue of differences, barriers and boundaries between different professional and organizational groups, because everyone has a different way of doing things. And when you bring those sometimes conflicting perspectives together, you may have problems collaborating, you might even have conflict. So the question is how to make sure that this process is made easier for you as clinicians. And I think there are a number of important things. Uh, the first thing is the most simple. I would say this is the availability of information which is relevant and also being able to present this information in a very convincing way. I will use as an example uh, one of the most common things that clinicians might want to do is improve, this will be an improvement project. So when you want to uh, cross the boundaries and collaborate by uh, putting together a nice improvement project, what kind of information would you need to present and to whom to make sure that your case is worth funding and spending resources? And uh, uh, it's usually very simple. It doesn't have to uh, occupy lots of, and lots of pages. It's usually just a one page or a presentation slide or some graphic which shows very clearly what the benefits are for the patients and for the health service and for other groups involved if you implement this fascinating, amazing improvement project. So this is number one tip, availability and relevance of information. However, as we know from research and our own experience, the availability of information, even if it is well presented, is not necessarily enough. Uh, so then another important aspect uh, comes into play, which is the understanding of the broader landscape in which you operate and in which you will want to implement this improvement project. As I mentioned before, there are often multiple groups involved, which could be clinical, non-clinical, have different uh, remits, have different degree of authority. And obviously, because each of these groups operates differently, they will have different ways of understanding and different ways of engaging with your project. Furthermore, if you want to implement something new and collaborate, very often it will mean that there are implications for people's workloads. Unless you understand those implications, you might really experience some difficulties. So uh, the second thing I would say is a very clear understanding what, of what the whole system looks like and what are uh, the main groups that need to be consulted if you want to implement your improvement project. What are the implications for those stakeholders? How can they be useful for you? What can their contribution be? But also, what are the potential negative things that can arise from their involvement? How can they make the project difficult? How can they stifle it? What can you do to overcome that resistance? All these are the questions that you have to think about. And I would say the third thing, which is very important, is be being very clear about the benefits of collaboration, of your improvement projects to all those different groups involved. Because if you are able to articulate very clearly what it is that will make uh, people's life easier, uh, it will make it really easy for you to implement a, a, an, an improvement project. In practice, that often means uh, uh, talking to people a lot, mostly talking to powerful people who do not only have the understanding of the landscape, but can also become powerful allies for you. Because let's be honest, if you are a clinician on the ground trying to change a very large bureaucratic system, it might be quite difficult. So unless you are able to secure the support of powerful allies, you might have quite strong problems going forward. 